Hello everyone, I'm DC. Welcome to me and Learn to Live Again. I hope you're all well, having a great day or night, wherever you are. Um, so today, I'm just going to do a quick um, sort of clarification sort of video. Um, some people are having trouble uh, understanding the difference between cholesterol, lipids and things like that. So I just want to uh, show you a quick or a little bit more, uh, a better explanation of cholesterol, for example from uh, Dr. Zoe Harkham. And I've taken a clip from uh, a great interview she did with another uh, young doctor, um, which I will show you uh, his page very soon. So you can go and check that out for yourself. Um, and it's something well worth watching, actually. It's almost two hours long, but um, it goes in quite in depth to a number of different subjects, same subjects I've been talking about um another video will be coming out later today on fiber and other things as well uh fat cholesterol etc and how the dietary guidelines actually came about um so it, it's really well worth watching um and if you do want to read more about uh the dietary guidelines and and all these subjects um zoe harkham has a great website and newsletter that comes out uh, every week actually so uh, well worth checking out for yourself okay all right but first uh, let's have a look at um, a short uh, clip from the uh, from this video on uh, lipids versus cholesterol okay uh, wrong one there we go with cholesterol and because there is no issue with cholesterol, the, the whole LDL, HDL thing, and this is going to be a bit of a mind shift for some people as well. If you stop talking to me about cholesterol and you start talking to me about HDL, LDL, chylomicrons, triglycerides, which are VLDL by another name, then we're not having a conversation about cholesterol anymore. We're having a conversation about lipoproteins. So... Okay. Are you now worried about lipoproteins or are you still worried about cholesterol? Because if you're worried about cholesterol, I really don't think you need to be. And then when people start saying, oh, well, okay, I'm not worried about total cholesterol, but I'm worried about LDL cholesterol, but I think HDL cholesterol is really good. It's like they're the same substance. The chemical formula for cholesterol is C27H46O. And there is no good or bad version. Cholesterol is cholesterol is cholesterol. So in... Lipo, we should probably quickly explain what lipoproteins are. So um, if I took my beaker of, ooh, put it in camera here, if I took my beaker of water here and I got some olive oil and I drip some olive oil in the water, it won't mix because fat and water right. don't mix. That's the analogy for blood being water and the olive oil being lipids that need to travel around our bloodstream to reach the cells to do their vital work. So the body has come up with this fantastic system and it says, okay, we're going to have these things called lipoproteins. I think of them as taxis. And these little taxis are going to go in the bloodstream to transport the vital cargo and they're going to be water friendly on the outside for the blood and they're going to be fat friendly on the inside for the lipids. And those lipoproteins are all carrying cholesterol, phospholipids, triglycerides and protein, all of them just in different amounts. So the HDL is just a high density lipoprotein. It's just smaller than the LDL, which is a low density lipoprotein. So it's less tightly compressed they have different amounts of cholesterol different amounts of protein triglycerides and all the rest of it but they're both just taxis and they're both taxis that carry cholesterol so why yeah there you go brilliant and and that's not a bad um size dimension as well so someone someone has done that to size so the chylomicron mm -hmm. which is the one when you've eaten um your lovely steak and you've got some saturated fat monounsaturated fats, polyunsaturated fats, but more importantly, you've got the fat soluble vitamins and nutrients. The chylomicron is the one in the lymphatic system. The body will package those nutrients out onto the chylomicrons and they start going off around the body with the intent of dropping off that cargo to the cells that need it. Now, in a separate yeah. universe, 
The liver is making very low density lipoproteins. They're also called triglycerides, which gets a little bit confusing. So the liver's making the VLDL. Now, VLDL, as part of its process, kind of shrinks, keeping it simple, shrinks down to what we call intermediate density lipoproteins, IDL. They then shrink down and they become LDL. Now, some people then say, oh, so okay, so if your VLDL goes up, then your LDL will go up. Now, Dr. Malcolm Kendrick, who studied this more than anyone else I know, he's devoted his life to looking at what really causes heart disease. He say, well, actually, that is not the case. The amount of VLDL that you have doesn't actually determine the amount of LDL you have. So that's a, another issue for another day. The idea that HDL, another taxi is good, but all those taxis to the left are bad, is just nuts. It's back, you know, we were only in mad world insane this doesn't make sense a couple of minutes ago we're back in mad world insane it doesn't make sense they're just taxis the body didn't design four bad taxis and one good taxi they are all made by the exquisite functioning of the body for very very good reason so the vldl is taking cargo away from the liver and it shrinks down to become ideal and ldl so kind of think of ldl as the taxi that's taking stuff to the cells and then the HDL taxi will be picking any stuff not used up by the cell and taking it back to the liver. Now, again, if cholesterol is so deadly, why would it take it back to the liver? It doesn't excrete it from the body. It doesn't treat it like a waste, waste product. It takes it back to the, the liver where it can be recycled and then packaged out again. So I, I want to sort of scream at people sometimes. They, they talk about cholesterol and then they just slip into LDL an HDL seamlessly. It's like, whoa, 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 right, we're not talking about cholesterol anymore. We're talking about lipoproteins. So what's your beef with lip lipoproteins? You know, tell me, what, what's your issue with lipoproteins? Because you are no longer in the diet, heart, fat, cholesterol hypothesis. You are now arguing with me on lipoproteins. And so you've got to forget cholesterol and you've got to tell me what your issue is with lipoproteins and why you think you know better than the body because the body has designed all of that and that's how we've lived since we became humankind and you're now trying to block mm -hmm. that pathway you're now trying to say that some of those are bad and some of those are good and then you get people going into oh and then you've got small dense ldl and then you've got large fluffy ldl and all that kind of thing it's like apart from the fact i now really just want to find a wall and start banging my head against it and like could that be, you know, are we going to get to peak stupidity in this podcast at some point? <laughs> Apart from that, you're back talking about lipoproteins. So, okay, but stop talking about cholesterol. People, they don't even understand what they're talking about. They, you know, when you sit down with your doctor and you have a blood test, I mean, I don't because it's just too stupid. I, I, I upset myself. But I did once for a company medical and a doctor saying to me, oh, you're, um, your bad cholesterol is really low and your good cholesterol is really high. And I'm like, I'm the maths graduate from Cambridge and you're the medic. And that's just come out of your mouth. I mean, like, guys, this is in, this is nuts. This is nuts. Right. Should we okay. So that's um, pretty much a uh, longer form. She does have uh, lectures purely just on cholesterol, which if you look it up, just do a, a search and um, yeah, you'll find it pretty easily. Um, but going back to that interview, let's have a look. This is uh, about a two hour video and she goes quite in depth into the origins of uh, the dietary guidelines, the corruption involved and the ideology behind it. Okay, so it's, um, it's really well worth your time okay um this is on um an interview with dr thiago uh luz vaghi i think i hope they pronounced that correctly but uh, also another very good page for you to have a look at he has a lot of good interviews and um yeah so go check it out and uh, another another one i'll get you to have a look at if you haven't already seen this um Part of my interview with Zoe, um, we did also touch on cholesterol and she utterly destroyed the myth of cholesterol in less than three minutes, actually two and a half minutes. So 
I'll just show you that one as well in case you haven't seen it. Okay, so don't confuse dietary cholesterol with blood cholesterol levels. Okay. Um, and remember, cholesterol is not an essential nutrient. We don't need to consume it because the body is going to make it. And Ansel Keys, the guy who did the famous um, Minnesota starvation experiment back in sort of 1945, um, and also the guy who did the seven countries study, he spent a lot of time in the 50s looking at whether or not dietary cholesterol had any impact on blood cholesterol levels and he concluded that it didn't and we haven't deviated from that 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 is not very widely known but it is a new nutritional fact dietary cholesterol has no impact on blood cholesterol levels now the only thing that dietary cholesterol might do is it might say to the body okay you don't need to make quite as much because the person has just consumed some but you know, experiments have been done feeding people 20 to 30 eggs a day, eggs, of course, being very rich in cholesterol. And it doesn't make any difference whatsoever to blood cholesterol levels. It might make a slight difference to how much the body makes versus how much the body extracts from food. But the body has a cholesterol requirement and the body will make the cholesterol that it needs to, to meet that requirement. So dietary cholesterol is irrelevant. And I think that the American dietary guidelines woke up to this um, and they certainly did in the 2020 American Dietary Guidelines. It might even have been in the 2015 um, that they actually put in a statement saying dietary cholesterol is no longer a, a nutrient of concern. It's like, well, it never was a nutrient of concern. You know, we've known that for we've known that since the 1950s, and that hasn't changed. So it's just kind of like the calories. It's one of those myths that just kind of gets out into the ether. Um, and, you know, saturated fat is bad for you, fiber is good for you or whatever. I do find if you're, you you get a question at a conference and somebody says, oh, what about saturated fat? And you say, well, what is saturated fat? Um, they got no idea. Or well, what is fiber? Um, you know, just all this stuff that they regurgitate. And when you when you sort of throw it back at them, Gary Fecky, actually, one Dr. Gary Fecky from from your uh, down under, um, yeah. he, he has fellow doctors saying to him, well, you know, what about cholesterol? And he'll say, what is cholesterol? Yeah. And they can't even answer him. So, yeah. you know, it's like, well, shut up and go away until you can answer the most basic question of what you're throwing at me. Just stop it. Just, yeah. um, you know, go away and do a bit of research. Okay, so there it is. You know, that's cholesterol and lipids. Um, you know, basically... Uh, like li uh, lipid proteins are made up of uh, lipids that carry nutrients, okay, the uh, oil rich uh, sort of nutrients, you know, around. They're like taxis, okay, and that's pretty much all they do. Um, and there's no good or bad, they're just um, some have higher density than others, and you know, they basically just range in size. Um, so, all right, guys, uh, I hope that helps clarify a few things on cholesterol. And um, again, if you have, um, you know, Dr. Zoe Harkam is absolutely a, a great resource. Uh, that she has plenty of interviews on YouTube if you look her up. And she also has a great page, uh, internet site, um, and has a great newsletter that comes out every week. So I encourage you to check it out because it is it's very, very much well worth your time. All right, guys. See you, see you all again soon and uh, have a great day or night, wherever you are. Take care.